this video is all about sleep. Sleep has become my absolute favorite topic in health and wellness because for me, it was the key to unlocking all of my fitness potential. I've seen it over and over and over help people get through plateaus. I've seen it help them get through mental blockades and physical barriers. I've seen it help them so much and all they needed to do was sleep a little bit more. There are a lot of things that sleep does, but we're gonna focus just on the wellness aspect of this. I like to call sleep the great regulator. If you're someone who suffers from craving foods or from trying to get yourself not to eat bad foods or from having trouble getting yourself to exercise or stick to your goals, there's a good chance that sleep is hindering all of those goals for you. No matter how mentally strong somebody is, you cannot fight against your genetics long term. Eventually you will give in. There's a reason why your genetics are telling you to do what they're telling you to do. And so we need to figure out the best way to work with your genetics. Instead of having you fight food cravings, we find out that if you sleep, your body will actually regulate the chemicals that force you to crave food. So you don't have to fight it so hard, you can actually work with your body. So there's four things that I wanna talk about that sleep helps to regulate. The first one is our two hormones called ghrelin and leptin. Ghrelin and leptin are responsible for helping you to feel hungry or full. You cannot trick yourself away from feeling hungry or full. It's not just about powering through so that you can get to your next meal. It's not just about forcing yourself not to eat. You actually physically have chemicals floating around in your body that create the sensation of hunger and create the sensation of fullness. I, for a long time, went in a position where I could eat food and eat food and eat food and I would just eat until I was stuffed, but I would never actually feel satisfied with my food. I would just know, well, I'm stuffed now and I've got to roll out of the restaurant, so I must be done. It's amazing to me to figure out when I fix my sleep, and so many other people fix their sleep, all of a sudden you get to a point where like you're eating a piece of cake and you actually feel like, okay, you know, three bites into it, I'm kind of done. And you don't actually like want it. It's not a forceful thing to try to get yourself not to eat it. That is an interplay between those two hormones actually doing the job they're supposed to be doing. So if you're struggling with food cravings, imagine that if you actually help to regulate those hormones through a little bit more sleep, and now all of a sudden you don't have to fight how much easier your goals would be. The next portion that sleep help with is neurotransmitters. So neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. Neurotransmitters are the key to helping you control food cravings. A lot of times if you're an emotional eater or if you eat because you're bored, you're not actually eating because you want the food. You're eating because your body is craving a mental reward. If you get enough sleep, your body will help to regulate those chemicals a little bit more often and you will oftentimes find yourself reaching for junk food less often. One of the things you'll notice is that a lot of times if you're a snacker late at night, the reason for that is your body's actually getting tired and it's trying to get you to go to sleep. So those neurotransmitters are getting bumped around and moved around and that creates a crave for junk food and you end up just destroying your cupboards like five minutes before bedtime then you go to sleep and now you've eaten 500 extra calories for the day. The third one is growth hormone. Growth hormone is so important for you to gain muscle. Think about this for a second. When you exercise and when you eat food, you don't actually get stronger muscles because of the exercise or because of the food. You get bigger muscles because of the hormones that get triggered from the activity and the food that you're eating. That means that it is possible for you to work out as hard as you want and eat as cleanly as you want, but if you're not triggering a hormone response, you are not going to get results, period. One of the biggest areas where growth hormone is produced is during deep sleep. So if you need to, so if you're trying to gain muscle or you're trying to lose fat, you need growth hormone to be able to do that. There are people who take growth hormone injections to try to create that response. There are people who try to artificially trigger growth hormone to make it work. You need that hormone to be able to get the results that you want out of the gym. The last one I'm gonna talk about is your nervous system. There are two sides of your nervous system that are always in contest with each other. One is the parasympathetic side, and the parasympathetic side does things like helps you to digest and feel relaxed in the sense of peace and calm. That's what's associated with like yoga, so loose muscles, a body that feels nice and relaxed and loose. The sympathetic side of your nervous system is the side associated with adrenaline, high intensity, weightlifting, sprints, high intensity lifestyles, everything. So think uh, sympathetic is fight or flight, is preparing you to either fight something or run away, but the point is lots of tension, lots of lockdown, hit it as hard as you possibly can. And the parasympathetic side is the side associated with chilling on the couch. Your body takes all the things that you do through the day, your total lifestyle, and it plays on two different sides of your nervous system to try to create a version of you that can live up to the lifestyle that you're living. So if you're under tons of mental stress all day long, 
Then you go to a high intensity exercise class. Then you lay down and you only sleep four to five hours a night. And then you have other stressors like alcohol in your life, which ca cause extra stress in your system. You are a ball of stress. You are a ball of sympathetic overdrive. And there's actually diagnoses in other parts of the world. It's a medical diagnosis where if someone comes in with a certain set of symptoms, they're diagnosed as having sympathetic overdrive. And their prescription is to go and meditate or go to a spa or whatever for a few weeks and actually get themselves to relax. Sleep is a great way to help regulate that because it's during deep REM light sleep that you actually start to relax your nervous system and everything starts to calm itself back down so that you can get ready to take on the stressors for the next day. In the end, sleep is a major control center for everything that requires motivation to do. You will notice that the things that are not as fun to do or that require a lot of effort will become much, much more difficult if you are sleep deprived. If you're the kind of person who only gets five hours of sleep a night and you're like, well, you know what? I don't need seven, eight, nine hours. I sleep great. When I lay down, my head hits the pillow and I am out. If your head hits the pillow and you're out immediately, it means you are exhausted and your body has figured out a way to get you to stop feeling tired. Think about that. You are so tired that your body has figured out how to become resilient enough to get you to function, to get you to not feel fatigue. So even though your brain doesn't sense it, your brain has actually numbed itself to the fatigue that the rest of your body feels. So remember, seven hours minimum a night, if you wanna work out at higher intensities, meaning you wanna do you know, an hour, five days a week of heavy weight lifting, you need to think more like eight, nine, 10 to actually get your strength numbers up. But I promise you, if you actually take the time to get the amount of sleep that your body requires, your productivity will go through the roof, your enjoyment of life will go through the roof, and your ability to stick to your health and wellness initiatives will get dramatically easier. If you find yourself starting to have any issues at all with sleep as you bump up your exercise intensity specifically, I find that a lot of people usually end up developing some kind of a magnesium deficiency because of either the high exercise load or because of super high stress levels. So that might be also something that you want to look into. Enjoy your sleep. Sleep well.